We're going to be doing something a little different today guys. I'm doing a semi-collaboration with Lee McCoy over at Drum Dums and we're going to be doing a movie review for Just Before Dawn. We'll, we've watched it at the same time and we're going to release the movie review at the same time and it's going to be quite interesting because I have seen it before but Lee hasn't. <laughs> Coming to get you, Barber. Just Before Dawn is the 1981 horror movie directed by Jeff Lieberman and it stars George Kennedy, Chris Lemon and Greg Henry. Now before I get into the review for Just Before Dawn, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory behind the history of not just the movie but myself in relation to this movie. When I was younger, I always have it in my head that Just Before Dawn was if not the first, but one of the first horror movies that I ever saw. I think I was around five years old when I seen it with my dad and my sister. And we just sat down and watched it one night and I absolutely loved it as a kid. And because there was no internet back then, I couldn't remember what it was called. Me and my sister just called it The Men Bears. And that's all the kind of history that I had with remembering the name of the film. I just remembered some scenes in the movie and what happened in it but I couldn't really tell you what it was called until the internet came around and I searched online I said to people does anybody know the name of this horror movie this is what happens in it we called it the men bears and finally we found the name of it and it was just before dawn but unfortunately it wasn't even out on DVD at the time because I was just starting to collect DVDs and the VHS was almost unheard of at the time and then it eventually came out on DVD and then Blu-ray and the rest is history and it's called just before dawn so that's a kind of backstory behind uh, my involvement of knowing what Just Before Dawn is because not a lot of people have heard of it and including Lee himself I think he's heard of it but he'd never seen it before and it's going to be interesting to see the comparison between my review and his review because I've got a nostalgic factor for Just Before Dawn whereas he's watching for the first time today and it might look a little bit dated to him, I don't know, we'll find out. It's got a very simple plot, these group of backpackers, campers are going into the woods because one of them uh, owns a plot of land in that area and they go to scope it out and do some camping, there's five of them and then the local ranger played by George Kennedy, he warns them not to go in the woods because something evil will kill them and etc etc. The old 80s cliche horror movie plot. When it comes to the acting in the film, I think the acting was really good, obviously by George Kennedy, who, who we all know. It also stars Greg Henry, who's in Slither, uh, Payback and Guardians of the Galaxy, so he's a well-known actor and he does great in this. I think everybody, even the unknown people, I think Chris Lemon is kind of known, uh, and a few of the others. They're not in massive movies apart from George Kennedy and Greg Henry, but everybody was great. I don't think there was any bad actors, especially from the main cast anyway. What we had in this film was great character development, great character building. You've got one of the actors, again, this is a spoiler-free review. Uh, you've got one of these actors who, or one of the characters, who's a, a, a quiet, timid, mild person. And when they're under attack, when they're fighting for their lives, they change. And that's what's great about this film because you don't see that today in a lot of horror movies and the fact that they'd done that back in 1981 was great for the time but if you brought in the same actors and the same kind of storyline today nothing would change i don't think it's dated badly at all the movie does have some intense scenes in it and that's why i remember the movie so vividly when i first seen it because it has got some scenes in it that i thought were shocking for the time and very scary for the time and i think that hasn't changed watching it today it still has some very intense scenes there was one scene in particular which i can't spoil for you but it's a pivotal scene in the entire movie and i remember watching it for the first time thinking oh wow, I didn't see that coming. And even when I watched it today for the first time in a couple of months, because I do watch this all the time, watching that pivotal scene, you still get a kind of chill because even though I'm expecting it coming, I don't think any of you guys would expect it coming. I'll quickly touch on the score. The score was done by Brad Fidel, who's well known for Fright Night, uh, The Midnight Hour, The Terminator. He does some fantastic scores and he does an amazing score in this film. This is one of the eeriest and scary scores that I've heard in any horror movie. It's got this, there's one of the parts of the score that he uses, it's, it's like a whistle, like birds in the woods, and you hear it like, I'm, just, I'm going to do a really bad impression here, but it goes something like, <whistles> and 
and just the way he brings it into the score, building up the tension in the score. And he uses a lot of background noise, natural background noise with the birds chirping, the wind blowing with the trees and the leaves. It's absolutely phenomenal. So Brad Fidel done an amazing job with the score. They also done something similar with the cinematography and the scenery. They filmed it on location. They didn't film it in a studio. So everything that you saw in this film was original to the woods, uh, to the waterfall that they used in the movie. And there was even this little church in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was abandoned and it had a lot of gravestones around it as well. It was very eerie and scary looking and some, of, in fact, two of the scariest scenes in the film uh, take place at this little tiny church with the little graveyard around it. Very scary and very effective. The film's also got this dreamlike white haze over it, not at night time, but at the daytime, it was unintentional. You can tell it was unintentional, but it still added to that nostalgic factor, especially when you watch it today, that it's got this white haze over it. It looks like a dream, but again, it was very effective. The death scenes as well, all of those were memorable for me anyway. And also, they were very brutal for the time. I know that the one of the first versions that I seen for this film, it was cut. Um, so when I watched the uncut version, I knew what was happening, but you saw more for a longer period of time as well. I don't think it was necessary, but I think it was still brutal and I had to be, I had to show some brutality for it to be a horror movie. So yeah, I think it was necessary uh, now, but for the time, I don't know. Now here's an interesting fact for those of you who've seen the movie but don't know about this, but this wasn't intentionally supposed to be a backwoods slasher movie. It was supposed to be this um, voodoo curse style movie like more of a witchcraft horror movie that involved twins I don't know if you re realise but there was quite a few twins throughout this movie especially at the start and some of the characters were commenting on that at the beginning of the movie I wonder why there's so many twins around here maybe something in the water so some of the script was kept in when they had the intention to bring out this voodoo witchcraft movie but ultimately they didn't go with that they went with a backwards slasher movie now I've done nothing but praise the movie but most movies do have some negatives as well even the best movies and I find it hard to pick out negatives for movies that I absolutely love and just before dawn is a movie that I do love the only negative I could think of is during the movie and actually throughout the movie leading up to near the end they had some dialogue in it that still included the original script when it was that voodoo witchcraft style uh, script that they had how this demon do it raise the devil now I want to know what you meant by raising the devil. So I think that if they removed all of that, then it would have removed, removed some confusion. But you can tell when watching it again, when you know about this witchcraft storyline, that some of the script was kept in there and it didn't make sense. But apart from that, that's the only negative that I can think of. To this day, I still believe that Just Before Dawn is one of the most effective backwards slasher movies of all time. I think it's probably the best backwards slasher movie of all time. And honestly, guys, I still think this is one of my favorite horror movies of all time as well. If you haven't seen this film, guys, I highly recommend it. As I mentioned, that is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It was originally really hard to pick up. I picked this one up from the UK. This is the Slasher Classics Collection. I did pick up the Code Red version from the US quite a while ago. It's now worth a bit of money, but I sent that to Lee. Um, I think it was over a year ago. Not to review, but I just sent it to him because he'd never seen it before. And I thought I'd give it to him because it is one of the best movies of all time. Or the best horror movies of all time. So that's probably the one that he's going to watch. But it is highly available now. Easily accessible so you've got no excuse if you haven't seen it before guys but as always if you have seen the movie leave a comments down below let me know what you thought of it and do you agree with me is it one of the best horror movies of all time if not is it one of the best backwards slasher movies of all time if I haven't done it already, guys, I will leave a link to Lee's review for this movie down below. I won't do it initially because we will be uploading them at the same time. But once he's got his out, I will copy and paste the link to his video down below so you can watch his review as well. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.